What's going on there folks? Good morning, good afternoon to some. It is the Earth Master here on this Tuesday, March 29th, 2022, about 10.25 a.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 2.1 earthquake on the Earthquake 3D globe right there on the green flag. I'm going to jump into uh, quite a bit of solar weather activity here in just a minute, but I do want to point out we got a uh, kind of an earthquake swarm kicking up currently at uh, Yellowstone National Park. Stand by for just one second here. Uh, happening overnight and this morning, a pretty intense earthquake swarm kicking off here with a, a significant amount of earthquake activity centered right around the Maple Creek area, Madison River, northwestern corner of Yellowstone National Park here, just outside the caldera. Uh, which, by the way, is in the black line here, kind of a black circle, the Yellowstone Caldera. Uh, this thing just kicked up out of the blue. Uh, looks like about uh, 05 UTC time overnight. And since then, you can see the massive amount of earthquake activity that's kicked up here. Every single one of these spikes here indicative of an earthquake. Uh, and a lot of these are definitely under 2.5. We did have a... Uh, 2.6 kick up right here in this area uh, in the darker thicker red line so the majority of these are all under 2.5 but there's a lot of them I'd say there's a couple hundred of them here looking at this uh, map this general chart uh, USGS is picking up on this activity they're showing 70 earthquakes so far uh, from this swarm of earthquakes now these are just the ones they are counting uh, I'm gonna remember it's sometimes hard to get in here and decipher um, the exact magnitudes of all these little ones uh, but they're getting to them I, I definitely give them a round of applause uh, today because of the activity um, and the quickness that these guys are reporting on it look at that 70 earthquakes here around the once again the northwest corner when we bring down the 2.5 and above you could see that there was one 2.6 and that was that darker red line I just showed you guys there on the map so the majority of these um, under 2.5 there's a cup quite a few twos in here as well but not above the 2.5 threshold and the uh, earthquakes themselves are bouncing all over the place in terms of the depth here we got some pretty shallow down to about two kilometers or so looks like that's about the uh, <clears throat> let's see here if that's the most shallow quake I see on here about two kilometers there's 2.2 some of these down to about 18 to 20 kilometers 2.6 so they are all over the place there's no consistency here on the depth of these earthquakes uh, which leads me to believe that this is going to turn into a pretty good long-term swarm uh, just due to that uh, variation there in the depth of the earthquakes and uh, mostly centered like I mentioned over here uh, purple mountain sits down here to the south it's all pretty much within this region this little cluster of quake area and not seeing any other migration of the swarm anywhere else of course the larger earthquakes uh, in, in terms of just being you know the twos and some upper ones are showing up on distant seismograph stations here such as the uh, old faithful down here there is the 2.6 that struck of course that's going to show up <clears throat> uh, on greater distances here at uh, the stations nearby and uh, some of the other twos and upper ones shown up here as well but uh, the epicenter I firmly believe is right around the Madison River or Maple Creek area that's where we see the most intense lines of uh, spikiness so to speak in terms of the uh, <clears throat> the amount of earthquake activity that's kicking up here folks this is pretty a uh, pretty good swarm uh, this all comes in at a time where we're looking at a uh, potential here for a G3 class storm kicking up here we got a couple CMEs headed our way um, back to back they all could combine and enhance the arrival of the solar storm on March 31st into April 1st so things are gonna start getting cooking here with a potential G3 class storm right now it is uh, G2 on the 31st but I was just looking at uh, the spaceweather.com website here and uh, they got a pretty cool uh, graph here video showing the coronal hole 
or not coronal hole but the cmes that kicked off here and they're all earth directed directly earth directed here um from those m spots those uh sun spots that kicked up here a couple flares uh they actually had about uh 11 c class flares and six m flares from just one sunspot uh, over the last day or so uh, 2975 is the culprit here in the uh, amount of activity we're seeing uh, let's see here what these guys are reporting uh, the first CME has already been modeled by NASA NOAA it is expected to hit Earth's magnetic field on the 31st the second CME and the potentially third CME are following close behind they will likely arrive on April 1st their combined impact could spark a G2 to G3 class geomagnetic storm now G2 model uh, power systems high latitude power systems may experience voltage alarms uh, long duration storms may cause transformer damage now this is from the G2 not not saying it's going to happen but these are the potential uh, issues that may arise from a G2 storm uh, spacecraft operations corrective actions to orientation may be required by ground control possible changes in drag effect orbital predictions uh, also radio communications will be affected um, looks like typically 55 degree higher uh, let's see here hf radio uh, can propagation can fade at higher latitudes here here's the interruptions in radio communications and aurora has been seen as low as new york and idaho so mid latitudes here potentially could get uh, uh, some storming. The G3 here, now check this out here, the G3 class storms, uh, pretty strong, right? A little bit more powerful than a uh, than the G2, up to the KP index of seven. Power systems, voltage corrections may be required, false alarms triggered on some protection devices uh, for spacecraft operations, surface charging, uh, may occur on satellite components drag may increase on low earth orbit satellites and corrections may be needed for orientation problems other systems intermittent satellite navigation and low frequency radio navigation problems may occur <clears throat> here's the hf radio um, high frequency radio uh, communications could be affected as well and uh, aurora has been seen as low as illinois and oregon Wow, so that's for the G3 class storm uh, that could arise from the combination of all of these uh, uh, the CMEs that are Earth directed once again. So this could start, it looks like it will start around the 31st and into the 1st of April. Current threat, uh, still looking at a possibility of seeing an X flare from this. Uh, from this crackling sunspot we did dip a little bit here a little bit trending down here in the solar flare detection but don't let that fool you the uh, the uh, complexity complexity of the sunspot is still there uh, when it comes to possibly producing a another good sized flare so we'll have to keep an eye on that pretty closely but uh, prediction uh, at least for now forecast 95 percent chance of a sea flare that's obvious because that's what we're crackling with right now and uh, x flare at a 10 percent chance elevated uh, potential and m flare at 35 percent uh, no major coronal holes facing us but watch for this to change here in the coming days uh, or a couple nights as we get uh, closer to that uh, arrival of the first cme and then the subsequent two behind it if these things join in together, then we're looking at a pretty good storm uh, upwards up to a G3 class storm here on this uh, beautiful planet we live in. So uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, checking out the earthquake activity aside from the Yellowstone movement, which is uh, pretty impressive, I think, anyway. Uh, we're backing out here. Latest quake, at least on the USGS map here, shows a 5.5 earthquake off the coast of Mexico, well off the coast. Uh, at about 10 kilometers below the surface um, that's about I'm trying to think that's probably about the largest one I've seen uh, in the last couple of days here things have been kind of mellow uh, there's been quite a few fours and whatnot over here along the western Pacific rim and also into the Philippine plate 
One earthquake down here into the Australia area, 3.0. Surprised the USGS is showing that, but hey, that's small little steps forward is a big improvement. Here's a couple fours and some low grade fives. Like I say, these are not even as strong as that 5.5 that just struck off the coast of Mexico, but they are rather deep. We're getting a couple deep earthquakes here around the Fiji Islands once again. Uh, pretty quiet throughout the Papua New Guinea region. Swarming continues up here off the coast of Taiwan with some fours and up here around Japan as well. Some fours kicking off there. I think we're um, I think we're going to keep our eyes open pretty close on the solar weather relation to potentially large earthquakes here in the coming days and nights. Of course, the uh, you know flares almost flares almost instantly hit the Earth's um, uh, the Earth's ap the uh, atmosphere and whatnot when it comes to uh, certain dynamics of the energies from the sun uh, the uh, CMEs take a little bit longer time to arrive here but uh, we do notice um, you know quick arrivals from flare from the activity of a flare uh, but the subsequent CME does take a little time to get here but I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that we're probably gonna be looking at some elevated earthquake activity as well once the arrival of the uh, CMEs come here on the 31st and the 1st of April, um, 31st of March, 1st of April time frame. Because uh, it's just been, uh, I don't know, it's just been a little quiet here in terms of earthquake activity recently in the uh, past few days. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the west coast activity. A uh, little bit of movement up here, kind of wondering what's going on up here in the northern part of Sacramento Valley seen a little bit of a um, I can't say unusual but it's a little bit more uh, earthquake activity than uh, typical background levels here in the northern Sacramento Valley area some of this movement pretty deep here at about 19 kilometers uh, Shasta Mount Shasta sits way up here so I don't believe it's any relation to that uh, pretty good 40 50 miles uh, to the north of this earthquake activity of course, you got the valley, Sacramento Valley, and the surrounding mountains, the Siskiyous, the Sierra Nevadas here to the east, uh, all kind of um, play a part in the movement that we do see around here. There's a little fault system, Battle Creek Fault. It sits just outside of Shingletown, but a lot of this movement is off of there and to the north, so uh, I'm going to keep an eye on that. Tremor activity has been non-existent here for uh, a few days, ongoing for a few days again. Uh, if we take out the uh, couple couple days, few days where we did see tremor activity kick up um, during the month of March, uh, we would still be looking at uh, oh, a good four four months of very quiet activity. Of course, if you remember here about a week or so ago, we did have some tremor uptick along the Cascadia that has uh, since died out once again. This is yesterday's movement. Nothing. Zip zero. Nada going on here in the Cascadia subduction zone when it comes to trimmer. So kind of just uh, keeping an eye on things for sure. I think that plays a part on the movement that we're seeing um, around the west coast or lack of movement. It's just pretty quiet up here in the uh, Pacific Northwest as well. Uh, some deeper movement just outside of Seattle. Both sides of the Seattle fault zone here seeing some uh, deeper activity uh, with a 1.5 and a 1.0. Uh, movement throughout the Intermountain West region down through the Utah area remains a little spotty. Uh, Southern California, eastern part of the Sierra Nevada. This area here is very quiet as well. We're seeing uh, not a whole lot of movement here. Same for Southern California. It's just, just a little couple specks here and there, a couple circles there indicating some small microquakes uh, throughout the west coast which I believe is very common here for a plate boundary but uh, as far as any large scale movement goes here we're extremely quiet. Pecos, Texas area out here along the Guadalupe Peak region, the mountains, Sacramento mountain ranges at the southern end still seeing some movement here in the two to three range. Uh, Oklahoma some activity up here, northern Oklahoma but uh, eastern country looking, eastern part of the country looking pretty quiet. Puerto Rico seeing a little bit of swarming, uh, but uh, I don't know. It's just kind of a waiting game here. 
One thing I have noticed, we're starting to see a little bit more movement up around the Honduras area, right around the Caribbean plate. So I uh, wouldn't doubt if we start seeing this thing start to kick up a little bit further. Uh, when was it last month or so? Let me see if we go back last 30 days, see if we can spot that activity. That yeah, was pretty active, pretty active month over the uh, Caribbean region, uh, all around it. Uh, there was one earthquake up here, 4.6. Uh, just right around the uh, north of the Honduras area um, and now we got this one up here this 5.4 within pretty much about the same area but a little bit stronger uh, not hundred percent certain about the potential for larger quakes in this area uh, but I do know we get some right there's definitely quite a bit of activity uh, historically given here on the map looks like this area capable of producing uh, uh, upwards of about a 6.0 or so. Of course, that's uh, just since about 1900. Who knows what its complete full potential is. Uh, not for sure about the uh, stress rate on that region, though. Uh, let's back out of here. See what else we got around the globe, or at least around the flat scale map. Uh, map. Look at this. So South America still remains quiet. I keep mentioning, mentioning it every update. Uh, it's just been awfully quiet in terms of 4.0 and above. Just today, 4.3 in the Peru region. This is a pretty shallow earthquake here for the uh, trench, right up on the surface of the subduction zone. Uh, over here around the Mediterranean, Greece, Italy area, seeing a 4.3 for both of those regions. Middle East, pretty quiet. A little activity through the Himalayas down south. At the... Uh, uh, India region looks like 4.7 in that area, so yeah, it's kind of, man, all, all I know is we need to see how this swarm is, or this uh, solar storm is going to affect the movement today, um, and the coming, I should say, the coming days, as the arrival of these multiple CMEs head towards us. Let's go ahead and check out the, uh, go back over here to the solar ham website just want to check the most recent data and the trends here it kind of looks like we leveled out a little bit here last night um, started to see those M flares kick up and multiple C's multiple C flares but we are seeing a gradual decline in the consistency of those C flares but uh, it's still you know sometimes these trends go up and down a little bit so watch for possibly a forward, upward trend of uh, heightened activity. Looks like we may be getting into that here uh, within the last hour. So, all right, folks, we will uh, jump off here. I will keep watching these charts here, seeing, uh, seeing if we get further movement going here. Got a little one in the background uh, creating some havoc, but mama's, uh, mama's on it. <laughs> All right, folks, have a good day. Please stay safe out there. And um, yeah, live stream is up and running. Everything's running good on that. I did change the uh, Aurora model up on the uh, top left corner of the screen to the solar X-ray flux that shows the heightened flare activity that's incoming. Um, and uh, it's kind of cool to keep an eye on the current flare activity. And uh, once the CMEs arrive, we'll switch that back over to the uh, Aurora forecast model so we can kind of get an idea, general idea of how low we're going to see these uh, Auroras kick up um, beginning on the 31st. All right, guys, have a good day. Uh, we will chat you a little bit later on this evening. Peace out.